I'm David Wright, Associate Director of the Ambassadors of Harmony. And my name is Stanley Johnson, a member of the Ambassadors of Harmony's Board of Directors. In 1941, the fledgling society's third national convention was held in our home city, St. Louis, Missouri. Now in those days, the city of New York was sponsoring annual barbershop quartet contests in its parks, a tradition that had started in 1935. And in fact, the society's 1940 contest the previous year had been held in New York City, where the New York Parks Contest winner was invited to compete. In 1941, the winner of the Parks Contest was the Grand Central Red Caps, four singing train porters, and keeping with the common practices of quartets representing the professional organization, there were singing policemen, shoeshine boys, even baseball players. The Red Caps had won singing the railroad medley appropriately and the classic barbershop song, Mandy Lee. The New York Parks Department sent a telegram to the Society presenting the Red Caps as their representative for the St. Louis Finals. But in an unfortunate reflection of the times, the response was negative. The Red Caps would not be eligible to compete, for the Society now required competitors to be members, and membership was for whites only. It was an ironic situation, since many of the earliest practitioners of Barbershop Harmony were African Americans. This resulted in the resignation from the Society of Parks Commissioner Robert Moses and former New York Governor Al Smith. A great deal of information about these events has been unearthed by Matthew Beals of New York City, to whom we're indebted. He has been able to locate original show programs, photographs, and radio broadcasts of some of the performances at the Parks Contest, but unluckily, not the Red Caps. However, we do have a recording of a quartet called the Southern Singers, consisting of two of the Red Caps, brothers, with another brother and his wife singing tenor. And we play an excerpt for you now. Tonight you must be ready. Be ready. Be ready. Oh, tonight you must walk ready. That's again. This evening's program is about how our music brings us together. While we cannot erase the errors of the past, we do want to affirm here and now that our music is for all, regardless of race, color, or creed. We celebrate the spread of our special kind of harmony to more diverse groups of people here in America and throughout the worldwide community, bringing together young and old, rich and poor, black and white. Please welcome to the stage, Barbershop Harmony Society CEO, Marty Munson, and Society President, Skip Kropp. Thanks for our wonderful story, David and Stanley. You've heard us speak for the last 10 days of the new vision of the Barbershop Harmony Society, everyone in harmony. Your response has been beyond our wildest dreams. Perhaps the most gratifying theme across the hundreds of posts and emails is the wild enthusiasm for our statements about inclusion. Clearly, there's been pent-up demand for moving in this direction. I'm in awe of all of you for your support. You've just heard the story about how SPBSQSA denied participation to the four members of the Red Caps. Our decision in 1941 was unjust and has never been corrected. It does not reflect who we are today and certainly not who we wish to become. As we state in our strategic vision, if today we proclaim that our vision is one of everyone in harmony, one more big step must occur. And it needs to be a step of action, not words. First and foremost, we must unequivocally turn away from any cultural vestiges and exclusion. We must become radically inclusive and diverse across cultural, ethnic, racial, gender, sexual orientation, social, economic, and generation aligns. We hereby declare our commitment to this transformation.
Tonight we begin this transformation with two steps to tell you about the first President Skip Crop. Thanks, Marty. What has bound thousands of men together in harmony for the last 80 years has been membership in our beloved society. And that is what we denied to the men of the Grand Central Red Caps in 1941. So I ask you to take five seconds and close your eyes and think about what your life would have been like without membership in our society. While we can neither comprehend the personal impact each of the red caps may have felt nor correct it, we can at least place a marker on this chapter of our history we can say this happened to these four men. It shouldn't have, and it won't happen again. And so tonight, as president of the Barbershop Harmony Society, I'm awarding a lifetime membership to each of the now deceased members of the Red Caps. Sadly, each of their lives ended without the opportunity to stand beside us as a member, so we can only award this posthumously. But at least we can do that. Therefore, four plaques will be placed in honor in Harmony Hall. And the language on each of these plaques is identical with the exception of the names of the member and their birth and death dates. But I'm going to read each one individually because I think we owe these men that much respect. Owen Ward, lifetime membership is hereby awarded posthumously to Owen Ward, born 1906, deceased 1977 of the Grand Central Red Caps, 1941 New York City champions barred from the national contest, excluded in 1941, embraced today, signed by CEO Marty Monson and me as president. To Jack Ward, lifetime membership is hereby awarded posthumously to Jack Ward, born 1926, deceased 1999, of the Grand Central Red Caps. 1941 New York City champions barred from the national contest, excluded in 1941, embraced today. Signed, Marty Monson, CEO, and me as president. For Robert Ward, lifetime membership is hereby awarded posthumously to Robert Ward, born 1903, deceased 1969, of the Grand Central Red Caps. 1941 New York City champions, barred from the national contest, excluded in 1941, embraced today. CEO Marty Monson and President Skip Kropp. And finally, William Bostick. Lifetime membership is hereby awarded posthumously to William Bostick, dates of birth and death unknown of the Grand Central Red Caps. 1941, New York City champions barred from the national contest. Excluded in 1941, embraced today. Signed, Skip Crop, President, Marty Monson, CEO. But as we have stated, our commitment to a radically inclusive barbershop must be one of action, not just words. We must find ways to give access to communities outside our traditional comfort zones and circles of acquaintance. 
We must provide tools, education, and resources in communities where we're not commonly known. We must share not just a musical style, but our culture of instant friendship around a few chords, across generations, and every other division. Change doesn't happen without a con conscious, continuing choice to change. Actions require not just intentions, but resources, and resources require dollars. Therefore, I'm pleased to announce tonight, at its board meeting earlier this week on Tuesday, the Society Board of Directors approved an initial investment of $50,000 into a newly created Grand Central Red Caps endowment. These dollars will be used to provide scholarships and other supports to encourage the broadest possible participation of promising barbershop singers, music ed educators, and directors of color. This is only a start. With the help of our friends in Harmony Foundation, and of course, all of you, we intend to grow this investment substantially over the next years and decades in order to realize over the years and decades to come, the vision of everyone in harmony. Thanks once again for making vision a reality. Absolutely. Thank you.